Hello, everybody. As I was beginning to breakfast for our Torah, I was thinking about color war and Hanukkah and what it means. What does Hanukkah mean? And I thought, I thought of the Chashmonai, the Kohan, right? They were fighting the Kohan, and they fought. What were we fighting about? Torah. We wanted to keep our Torah. The Yivan wanted to take it from us, and we refused to give it to them. But where is Malchut, right? You have to go on your Torah. Where is Malchut? And I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And then I remember the story that Robert told me, and I, I really think it speaks uh, volumes. It was a rabbi, Rabbi Silverstein. And he was a good guy, you know, when Torah he's a rabbi, that's a good guy. Um, but he's working, and his work takes a lot of time, and he doesn't have a lot of time for his wife. So one day he's like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to leave work early, and we're going to have a nice dinner. What happens? Three o'clock, he stops working, and the phone rings. That all happens to all of us, right? You know you shouldn't answer, but you do. And he called me, he answered it, and there's a guy from another department who needs a little help. So he goes over, helps him. One thing, two things, three things. She looks up, and it's eight o'clock. He has just stood up his wife. He calls her, he's so sorry, and she says, it's okay, I knew this was going to happen. You know, women always know. She knew it was going to happen. But that doesn't make it any better. He feels worse now. He goes across the street to the bar, drinks a little bit, a little more, a little more, and he decides he has to go home. He gets in his car and starts driving. And as he gets to the highway, he's in such a state he doesn't realize he's going the wrong way on the highway. He gets a call from his wife. She says, be careful coming home. There's a lunatic on the highway. He's like, one lunatic? They're all crazy. They're all going the wrong way. Sometimes we look at things and we think there's only one way. We think our way is the way. But sometimes you have to look at it from other perspectives to really understand it. So why do we have kings? Right? What's the point of having a king? So Svono says it's a punishment. And although he's smart, Smart are normally right. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with what he wants to say. I have trouble understanding it. I rather go according to the opinion of the Rambam. The Rambam says it is a blessing and a mitzvah for Jews to have a king. Right? So what does the king do? Why is it such a mitzvah? Why is it such a blessing? The answer is a king is not a punishment. And it's not like the Abarbanel says, he's not just there to fight wars and be a king. A king is special because he is a physical and spiritual leader of the Jewish people. How do we know this? How do we know he's so spiritual, such a great leader? Well, look where it comes from. It comes from Yehuda. It comes from David. <laughs> Wait, what? It comes from Yehuda? We just learned what happened to Yehuda. He's up with his daughter-in-law. Is that what we want him to do? David, he takes the guy's wife, has him killed. Is that the type of kingship we want? Is that where we want our kings to come from? Um, I think you have to look to the deeper meaning of what these stories are really telling us. In both cases, they had opportunities to be free, to push it away. You know, he could have said nothing. They were about to burn her. He could have said nothing, and no one would have known. He would have known. And for a leader, for a king, that's enough. If I know, I have to stop it. For David, he was the king. What he said went. No one would have gone against him, but he knew. He knew what was happening. He knew what he did. He had to confess. He confessed. He said, Satan Hashem, unlike Shaw. <coughs> I'd like to uh, explain this a little more with a idea about Shabbos Agadol. What's Shabbos Agadol? It's the Shabbos before Pesach. Right? Shabbos Agadol. The big Shabbos. What's so big about it? It's for Pesach. I can think of a lot of other Shabbos that are big, right? What about the Shabbos we got the Torah? Shouldn't that be a big Shabbos? Right? I would think so. What do you think? No? Yeah. Um, the Mephar should tell us, don't read Shabbos of Duggle, double great, big. Don't read it that way. Read Duggle as Duggle versus Kata. Why? The first nine Mako, the first nine plays, the Jews were actually embarrassed about what was happening. They felt weird, they felt different. 
They were afraid of being different. They wanted to be like everyone else. The tenth plague comes, and they have to take responsibility. They have to take action. What happens? The Egyptians will ask you, what are you doing? And they say, we're taking your God, we're slaughtering it, we're putting the blood on the doors, and God's going to kill your firstborns. Clearly, at this point, they're proud of their Judaism, they're proud of who they are, and they're confident enough to do what must be done. That's why the king will come from Yehuda. That's why the king will come from Dublin. The king is supposed to do what's right, no matter what. In 1942, the Nazis seemed unbeatable. They were expanding their borders at a fantastic rate. Rabbi Yosef Tahanami made it out of Europe and he made it to Israel. He wanted to sell Yeshiva. People told him he was crazy. The Nazis are coming. They're going to kill you. Run away further. But he said, I can't run away. This is a colorless place. I have to run toward him. I'm going to be here. Today, there are tens of thousands of Yeshiva students studying at the Panavich Yeshiva. These are the attributes of leadership. This is what it means to be a king. You take the sheep. You slaughter it. You drive the wrong way on the highway. You do what must be done. Yes, the Hashemunah and the Kohan, they were important. Yes, Torah is important. But that's not why we have Hanukkah. Hanukkah is not about the Torah. Hanukkah is not the Torah. Hanukkah is about standing, with, standing up for what's right and doing what must be done. We know there are three guitar. Right? We have three guitar. We have Torah, Kohan, and Mahu. And we know that the Mishnah ends Shame told to Kula, that a shame told is as good as all three. But I want to say, in my proof of Hanukkah, from what I said to you today, Mahu is in close second. Thank you. Woo!